let's talk first uh, about the Cinus Flex program. Um, it's one thing to have an airplane that seemingly just about does it all, and then you give it a few other capabilities, and it pretty much does it all. We started off with the, the Cinus, which is a really popular aircraft for us, but its problem in the U.S. market is its wingspan. It's 50-foot wingspan, and that doesn't suit a lot of T-hangers, which are, are prevalent over here. So we started off with a removable wingtip version of it, which would knock it down to 40 feet. And then people said, that's great, but can we have two planes in one? Because there's another model called the Virus, which has slightly different wingtips, but everything else is identical. So now we offer what we call a Sinus Flex, as in flexibility. You can fly it as a 50-foot aircraft, or you can fly it as a 40-foot aircraft, and you have slightly different performance and economy characteristics in each configuration. What does that mean per airplane? Talk about the capabilities of each variant. Well, the 50-foot wingspan is primarily a glider. It's about 30 to 1 glide ratio. These are all registered as gliders, so you can feather the propeller, turn the engine off and go soaring. The 40-foot version is great if you're going cross-country because it's easier to, to taxi in narrow taxiways. You can get it into hangars because it's the same width as a 182 Cessna and you get slightly better economy and a few knots faster. The flying characteristics are a little bit different between the wings. The Sinus is more graceful where the Virus wingtips give it a more aggressive roll rate. What kind of person looks at something like this and says, yeah, this is my airplane? Um, good question. We seem to attract uh, different customers to most and, and the beauty of our product is that it can be registered in the LSA category as either an aeroplane or a glider, one at a time, it can't be both, or it can be registered experimental. If it's registered experimental as a glider, even somebody who has lost their medical and doesn't qualify for the LSA or sport pilot licence can still get a glider licence and fly our aircraft. So it gives us a much broader pilot base than say just a traditional LSA manufacturer where the pilot cannot have lost his medical before. If somebody's interested in the Cinus, what's availability, cost and so forth like right now? At the moment we're looking at about seven to eight months for delivery. We're just sort of getting over the hump of orders from Aero Friedrichshafen in April. Um, cost varies on options. All of our planes other than the Alpha are custom made different instruments, some are analog, some are full glass panels, so their price varies, but say a Sinus, you start at about 105000 up to about 125 as a maximum. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Since we uh, discussed Alpha briefly, uh, what have you learned from the program this year? With 50 airplanes out there, you must be getting a, tr a tremendous amount of data. It's going really well. They're not being utilized as much as we would like because probably the biggest hours is 250 hours in 12 months. We thought we'd get sort of 500 hours on each airframe, but a number of them have only recently been delivered because they were ordered this time last year, six months delivery, so some customers have only just taken delivery, so they're still brand new. So far there's no surprises, there's nothing but praise, the economy's really good, they're durable, we haven't supplied any undercarriages, been a few flat tyres reported from people in different areas, but other than that, no, going great. Well, let's talk about something truly exciting. We have monitored the Panthera program, the data and the video from first flight. Give us an update on all things Panthera. It's really exciting, but to me it's frustrating because any new plane takes a little bit longer than what it should. We were hoping to have the Panthera here, having completed its test flight program and on display at AirVenture. It didn't happen this year, unfortunately. We're about 85 hours into the 150 hour allocation Pippis will have given it for test flights. So we would have lost three months to bring the plane from Europe to the US and back again. So the decision was made several months ago to leave it in Europe and continue. The frustrating part is they haven't had good weather, but everything is progressing well. Yeah, as soon as we're back from Oshkosh, we're straight into spin testing and then they just keep going on through the test flight program. We now can't supply one until 2017. 
because we've got over 50 orders. Pipistrel have actually said don't accept any more orders for the aircraft until we can get some out there. First customer deliveries will be in March or April of next year in the experimental category. They'll be able to sell two or three fairly quickly and they'll look at how they go, make any final changes and then they'll start producing sort of two a month as they gear up into certification. Aspen's Trailblazing Evolution 2000 and 2500 systems offer an exclusive total backup capability that steam gauges and competing blasts just can't match. With full PFD capability built into the MFD and dual redundant backup batteries, Aspen's Evolution system offers the only glass panel that can effectively eliminate heavy, unreliable steam instruments. Aspen Avionics, a new way to look at avionics. What's happening with XCOM? What's new? XCOM's been going really well despite the downturn in LSA, which is traditionally our market. We've been more than treading water, which is really encouraging. We've just realised with the demise of my eyesight turning 50 that a lot of customers have difficulty reading the displays on two and a quarter inch radios. So what we've done is we've developed a new remote head for the XCOM which is a traditional aviation rack size, put in a super large OLED display. We've got letters that are like three quarters of an inch tall and you can read them from 40 feet away almost. The feedback has been encouraging. They've got about 300 names already for people that want them as soon as we start shipping in about two months time. But aviation is continually changing. The needs and requirements of our customers are and it's good to be able to get that feedback and meet the changes. Excellent. We wish you continued success. Hope to see more neat aircraft down the line and boy, I can't wait to get my hands on Panthera. We have a few things in the pipeline. I don't think it's any secret because it's been mentioned in the technology uh, pavilion, but uh, we will be turning up next year with basically a Pipistrel Alpha Trainer, which is electric, with a two hour um, usage at this time, which will increase by the, the end of next 12 months. And that's, that's really exciting.